Airbus has announced plans to go on a recruiting spree of more than 13,000 additional people. A decision to bring in new people globally comes as they look to ramp up their commercial aircraft programs. In addition, the manufacturer has placed importance on its other vital programs that it has, such as defense, helicopters, and space. In 2022 alone, Airbus actually welcomed more than 13,000 new employees and will look to replicate similar numbers for this calendar year. They note that a significant emphasis will be placed on people with technical and manufacturing expertise for the roles offered. Manufacturers are predicted to be up against this year with supply chain issues, shortages and much more. These challenges in the past have resulted in manufacturers such as Airbus and or Boeing missing targets and coming under criticism. Of the 13,000 new employees, Airbus says 9,000 will be located within Europe at its various facilities, while the remaining 4,000 will be based worldwide. Interestingly enough though, of the 13,000 new positions, more than 7,000 jobs the company plans to add will actually be jobs that are newly created, so it won't be people going into existing positions. The Airbus family is mammoth, with a team now consisting of more than 130,000 plus worldwide. Therefore, consistently recruiting, filling new roles and more are all essential to navigate the industry's current climate. Airbus further added that the new employees would play a fundamental role in their targets of being more sustainable and their decarbonisation roadmap that's been put in place. On to our next topic of the day, and you could argue moving from one positive to a more sadder topic in the industry. Regional UK-based carrier Flybe has announced it has ceased trading and subsequently cancelled all flights. In a statement, the CAA told all those booked on Flybe services not to head to the airport. In addition, they said flights would not be rescheduled, and this was an immediate shutdown. This is not the first time Flybe has experienced such a fate. During the coronavirus pandemic, the airline collapsed. It was in 2021 that the airline exited administration and was reborn once more as a regional airline, with the first flight taking off, or I guess you could say secondary first flight, in 2022. However, even after it was reborn, the airline never truly hit the heights that management and ownership were hopeful that it would. It continued to struggle before this announcement, and many were thinking it was inevitable and weren't necessarily shocked at the news we received. Flybe per Sirium data only had eight aircraft in service when it announced it had ceased trading. All of those were Dash 8 Q400s and one additional unit was remaining in storage. The carrier operated across 21 routes going as far as Amsterdam and Geneva. An outpouring of emotion has headed in the direction of the hundreds of staff that represented Flybe and are now experiencing their livelihood collapse before their eyes. Airlines such as Ryanair have actually been proactive and looked towards hiring staff previously positioned with Flybe, one of the positive stories to come out of something so negative for the people. Flybe, though, is just one of the many airlines globally that the current state of the world has negatively impacted. Rising costs have no doubt contributed to the result of a business that has found it challenging to currently survive in its state. The news was published at 3am local time and has been making the headlines. On to our next topic, and like I said, we're moving from a positive to a negative to another positive. With the Air France KLM Group announcing it had placed a firm order for the A350 freighter. The aircraft is Airbus's solution to the growing need for modern freighter aircraft, and the order includes four total units. The group says Martin Air, a Dutch cargo airline, will operate the A350 freighters once delivered. Now, this freight carrier has previously been known to fly MD-11s and many more historic aircraft, and I strongly encourage you after this video to head over to planespotters.net or any fleet tracking site, search up Martin Air, and just take a look at some of the planes they've flied. It's always a fascinating look, and as an aviation enthusiast myself, I absolutely love doing it with any airline I can think of. Comments from the Airbus Chief Commercial Officer and Head of Airbus International followed. Another A350 endorsement and a great one too. We are delighted to see the A350F enter the KLM Martin Air world, confirming the relevance this most modern high-capacity long-range cargo aircraft brings to the air freight segment. 
I'm very pleased with the way our program is taking off. With 50% less noise and 40% less fuel burn and CO2 emissions compared to the previous generation aircraft that is replacing, that is hardly a surprise. We thank Air France KLM Group for their continued confidence. Airbus announced the A350F only in 2022, this a year full of freight announcements if you will, as Boeing also announced the launch of their own 7778 freighter. The A350F is expected to enter into service later this decade and has thus far accumulated 35 orders across 7 customers. This though is less than what the 7778 has accumulated, however you could say that program has been heavily backed by a mammoth Qatar Airways order. Australia's newest low-cost airline, Bonza, has announced flights are finally bookable via its app. The airline will operate the Boeing 737 MAX to destinations it calls regional gems. Flights begin on January 31st from the Sunshine Coast to the Whitsunday Coast. Sunshine Coast will be the airline's central hub, with Melbourne soon being a secondary. The wait is over. 2023 is the year for Australia, with low-cost air travel to many holiday spots, some of which are relatively undiscovered. It's time to see more of our own backyard for less. These comments from Chief Commercial Officer Carly Povey at Bonza really highlight the direction the airline is hoping to aim for and is why so many Australians are excited. Some of the airline's busiest routes include the Sunshine Coast to Cairns with five weekly flights beginning at $79. Newcastle will see four flights per week, followed by Townsville also with four. Flights start at $69. Other destinations include Albury, Avalon, Coffs Harbour, Mackay, Mildura, Port Macquarie, Rockhampton and Townsville, all from the Sunshine Coast. Meanwhile, it will offer Cairns to Rockhampton and Mackay, Newcastle to with Sunday Coast and Rockhampton to Townsville. Bonza says that this is its initial flight schedule and it's part of Phase 1. As more aircraft will be joining the fleet in the future, its network will only grow, and what it will make possible is for Melbourne Airport to act as its secondary hub. If you keep up to the date with the DJ's Aviation website, you'll know I had the opportunity to speak with the Bonza CEO and also executives at Melbourne Airport to discuss how the airline would slot into the busy hub. Bonza has remained sure that it doesn't intend to try and replicate the network of existing Australian airlines. Instead, it wants to focus on its own market. And this is a market that their CEO, Tim Jordan, says will see underserved regional towns and cities benefit greatly, where at the moment you could make the case that they're priced out of air travel. Bonza wants to change that. And I'm sure not only for me, but everyone watching this will be wishing them the absolute best. That's going to conclude today's aviation news recap. I do hope you enjoyed this kind of format of video that I've been doing more of, taking a look at some of the more important stories that I didn't have time to getting around for their own video. Thank you so much for the support. Take care and be safe. Enjoy what is left of your weekend. And next week will be a massive one. So make sure you're staying tuned across my social feeds. Make sure you're staying tuned across the publication's social feeds for some pure aviation content to come.